Dimensional analysis is a mathematical technique that makes use of the study of dimensions. To use this method, one needs a general understanding of fluid phenomena, a prediction of the physical parameters that will influence the flow, and groupings of these parameters in dimensionless combinations. One generalized method for dimensional analysis is the Buckingham Pi Theorem. The point of Buckingham Pi Theorem is to arrange variables into a lesser number of dimensionless groups. So we have a lot of things to think about with one fluid problem, and if we can take all those variables and rearrange them to be a smaller bite to chew, it should be an easier problem to attack. And we're first going to start with our dimensionless variables. These variables are Reynolds number, Mach number, Weber number, Freud number, the coefficient of pressure, of force, and of shear stress. So we take these n-dimensional variables like velocity and density that make up these dimensionless groups, Reynolds number, Mach number, and Weber number, so on, and we're going to write them in dimensionally homogeneous equations. So that's going to be a function of x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, however many n-dimensional variables we have. We're going to rearrange them into pi groups and set pi is equal to zero, where pi is an independent dimensionless product of the dimensioned variables x. The steps for the Buckingham Pi Theorem. Consider the factors that are of influence on the system. List them and count. These are your variables. List the dimensions for each variable and count each dimension as your m value. Find the reduction number, k, where k is equal to n, your number of variables, minus m, your number of dimensions. Select m number dimensional variables to be the primary variables. Next we're going to equate the exponents of each dimension on both sides of the pi equation. Last, we will rearrange the pi groups as desired. Dimensional analysis does not provide a complete solution for fluids problems, but it provides a partial solution. And the success, as you can tell, depends on the individual using it and their fluids knowledge. Let's say, for example, we have a sphere falling through viscous fluid, and we want to find an expression to relate that to drag force. Step number one is consider the factors that are of influence. So first, it asks us specifically for an expression to relate drag force, so we're going to need that. And then we move to the sphere itself. What's going to matter with the sphere? Well, it's diameter. and its velocity, how fast is it falling. The velocity is going to take care of something like the, the sphere's weight, right? So let's move to viscous fluids. So what do we need to think about with the fluid? Well, fluid density, specific gravity, weight. So we're going to go with density. That's the a nice general non-gravity influenced value, right?
And the word viscous is there, so we better get viscosity in there. So our end number is 5. Next up on our to-do list is to list the dimensions of each variable in their dimensionless format. Okay, so drag force is mass and length and time squared. Diameter is just a length. Velocity is a length over time. Density is mass over three lengths, right? So length cubed. And then viscosity is mass over length and time. We have what? M's, L's, and T's. So that means our M count, our dimension count, is three. That means our reduction number K is going to be five minus three. So two, two pi equations. Okay, step five. Select M dimensional variables to be the primary variables. So primary variables must contain all of the M dimensions and not form a pi equation themselves. So stick with variables that relate to mass, geometry, or kinematics. Looking up here at our variables, we have density, which is mass, geometry, we have the diameter, and then kinematics, that's going to be our velocity, okay? And that contains M's, L's, and T's. So we've got all of our uh, dimensions taken care of with these three primary variables. So now we can plug those into our pi equations. Pi 1 is going to be density, diameter, and velocity, all raised to the powers of A, B, and C respectively. And then we have a variable that we didn't use. So I'm going to use mu first, and then we have our second pi equation, which again is going to be density, diameter, and velocity. So I've got a, b, and c, so I've subscripted them with two. Should I put ones up here? One and one. And then the other variable we didn't use, which was the drag force. Step number six is equate the exponents of each dimension on both sides uh, of each pi equation, so each separately. So our pi one is rho a, d, um, d, b, v, c, and mu. Okay, so my dimensions are mass, length, and time, and we are going to set them equal to density, which is mass over length, cubed to the a1 power, diameter, which is length, to the b1 power, velocity, which is length over time, to the c1 power, and then viscosity, which is mass over length times time. So let's set the exponents equal to each other. So for my mass exponents, I have zero is equal to a1 plus one. So I've got in my density mass raised to the a1 power and then in my viscosity mass raised to the first power. And then I have my length. So on the left side that's zero. On the right side we have negative three a1 plus B1 plus C1, and then it's in the denominator for viscosity, so that's plus negative one. Last we have time, zero is equal to negative C1 
plus negative 1 or minus 1. Solving these three equations for a1, b1, and c1, we find that a1 is equal to negative 1, b1 is equal to negative 1, and c1 is equal to negative 1. So that means that my pi 1 equation is equal to rho to the negative 1, d to the negative 1, v to the negative 1, times mu, or rho dv divided into mu. Rinse and repeat for the second pi equation. We still have density, diameter, and velocity, but this time we have the drag force coefficient, which is mass times length over time squared. Again, setting them equal. and solving simultaneous equations, we find that coefficient a2 is equal to minus 1, coefficient b2 is equal to minus 2, and coefficient c2 is equal to minus 2, meaning our second pi term is going to equal to density times diameter squared velocity squared divided into the drag force variable. Step number seven is the rearranging and manipulation of the pi equations. So we have our general form, zero is equal to phi of pi one and pi two. So that's going to be zero is equal to phi of pi one that we solve to be mu divided by rho dv and then our drag force over rho d squared v squared. Looking at our first term right here, that looks like Reynolds number upside down. So I'm gonna pull out this second term and then I'm gonna solve for the drag force because that's what I was asked for at the beginning of this problem. And we find that the drag force is some equation involving Reynolds number times rho d squared v squared. Let's look at a spillway with water flowing over it. Let's find an expression for the flow rate over the spillway using the Buckingham Pi theorem. Step number one, consider all the factors of influence. So it asked us specifically for flow rate. So that needs to be in there. And then let's look at the fluid itself. Now there's more than enough fluid here that viscous effects are not gonna be important, but because there's so much fluid, the gravity is going to be important. We also need to think about the height of the spillway itself and then the head acting over the spillway. Velocity is taken into account with flow rate as is um, other cross-sectional dimensions such as the depth into the page and the shape of the channel. That's all considered into flow rate. Uh, pressure, this is all open to the atmosphere so that's not going to matter. So I think we're good sticking with these variables of flow rate, gravity, height of the spillway, and the head over the spillway. Step number two is dimensions. So flow rate is a length cubed over time. The head over the spillway is just a length, as is the height of the spillway itself. We have gravity, which is going to be a length over time squared. So our entire system here is made up of two dimensions, length and time. So that means our reduction factor is going to be the 
variables minus the two dimensions. So again, we have two pi groups. We need to set, select m number of dimensional variables to be the primary variable. So we have two dimensional variables, uh, length and time, so I need two primary variables. And if we're talking about mass, geometry, and kinematics, we don't have any mass here, uh, but we do have geometry and kinematics. So what's the most important geometric property? I think it's gonna be the head over the spillway because the height of the spillway is not going to be as important on the fluid itself as how much fluid is moving over. So let's stick with head for our geometric property. And then if we're talking about kinematics, we've got gravity and flow rate. Well, which is the more important? Flow rate. So those are gonna be my two primary variables. So that means pi group one is going to be Q to the A1, H to the B1, and what's left over? P, and then pi group two is going to be Q, A2, H, B2, and gravity. Step six is equating the exponents. So for pi two, Sorry, we should start with one. For pi one, we have length and time, and we're gonna set them equal to flow rate, which is length cubed over time, to the A1, height, which is length, and then P, which is length, We will have zero is equal to three A one plus B one typo plus one. And then our second will be time. Time is an exponent of zero, negative A one. So solving these two equations, we find that A1 is equal to zero, and B1 is equal to minus one. Therefore, our pi one group is going to be P over H. So Q has that zero power. All right, rinse and repeat for pi two. Solving for the second pi group, we get its equation to be h to the fifth g all over q squared. Moving on to step seven, p over h, h to the fifth g over q equals two, zero. The whole point is to solve this for flow rate for Q. So I'm going to move that one outside. And we need to inverse everything. And that phi function stays as a function. So we just need the square root the left side and then bring those other values that are not Q back over. 